Today I'd like to talk about the Japanese artist Kiko Yoneda, who is not directly connected to Colin Oliveros, uh, whose music is the topic for this class, but rather has a peculiar kind of uh, vicinity to John Cage. She remained forgotten in the public eye, but I discovered her work last year and uh, asked Michael to let me present about her life and works in this class. So, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Uh, about a year ago, one of my acquaintances, Akihiro Hiraoka, uh, who is a grandson of uh, Keiko Yoneda, found a box full of Yoneda's manuscripts in his straight room. Some of which looked like musical notation, and others contained enigmatic numbers. Since I was a musician, Hiraoka asked me to analyze these manuscripts. And uh, uh, as I continued to analyze the manuscripts, I began to understand her intriguing works and her interesting life story. Uh, Keiko Yoneda was born in 1912 in Nagoya. Uh, she grew up in a wealthy merchant family. There was a piano in her house, which was very rare at that time. Because of her privileged circumstances, Yoneda was able to make herself familiar with the music of the Mozart and Beethoven in her childhood. In her 20s, she moved to Tokyo. Uh, this is a photo of her, uh, possibly taken around the 1930s. She was dreaming of becoming a poet, and she was enjoying her life with her contemporaries, such as modernist poets Kyojiro Hagiwara and Yukio Hariyama. Uh, Tokyo in 1930s was already developed as a modern city, and uh, various art movements and cultural production had flourished. However, as soon as the Second Sino-Japanese War began in 1937, the situation in Tokyo gradually became worse. In the same year, Yoneda got married to a composer, Shuzo Tanaka. From this time on, her name disappeared from most publications. Guessing from the situation, situation in Japan in this time period, uh, she had no choice other than living as a housewife after marriage. I had to rely on her journal to trace her life after 1937. In Yoneda's journal, Japan's gradual shift towards totalitarianism was depicted. In 1942, her husband, Shuzo Tanaka, died in the Battle of Tway. Around uh, 1943 to 45, Yoneda secretly, secretly began to create peculiar musical scores. She probably needed to avoid censorship from the government. According to my analysis of these scores, uh, they comprise of only the C major triad, C's, E's, and G's, that are extracted from Beethoven's study to piano sonatas. The picture displayed on the left is the numbering chart of the extracted C major triad. Uh, she numbered 1,154 C major triads out of 32 piano sonatas. Then, as shown on the right, uh, she transcribed them on uh, manuscript in order. Uh, this is an example of her numbering system in the beginning of the first movement of Beethoven's first sonata. she rearranged them into a new order to construct a fragment. Why did Yoneda have to work under such secrecy? 
among her remaining manuscripts, uh, there was an article by the famous Japanese composer <coughs> Kosa Yamada, which was published in a magazine in January 1942. It was titled "The Great, the Greater East, East Asia War." Sorry, the Greater East Asia War and the Musicians' Determination, which seems to be propaganda to help encourage the war. Uh, when the war and with our tremendous victory by weapons, what comes next would be cultural activities. In other words, a war with a pen. All kind of art will be involved in this war, but music is one of the most effective weapons. Therefore, we need to prepare now. Here, Kosak Yamada asserts the need of musicians' involvement in the war. Yamada continues. The artistic activities in order to accomplish the Greater East Asia War should serve the nationalist music. It should not simply be nationalist music of an island, but it should praise the Greater East Asia to him. In this sense, we have to compose something spectacular. The reason why Beethoven's music is still powerful today is that it is spectacular and uses the power of masculinity as the basis of his work. Uh, is it possible to interpret Yoneda's work as an antithesis to such propaganda by taking apart Beethoven's work? Let me introduce trial number 324 of 1154. After the war, Yoneda worked on visual and sound poetry based on the preface of the Japanese constitution. She counted the number, number of vowels and consonants, and she created a visual representation of them. I will now read a section of her sound poetry. Nippon Bobumin wa seito ni senbyo sareta bobbai no bel daihyou shou tsujite boudou shi, warera to warera no shison no tameni shou bobumin to no beowa ni yoru seiba to wababu ni zendo ni watatte jiu no motarasu beida bo babu ho shi, zeiku no boi ni yatte futatabi sensou no samba ga oboru koto to nai yo ni suru botou betsu ni shi, obo ni shiben ga bobu ni nizon tsuru botou zenben shi, bono ben bo obaku de suru. The Japanese constitution is often described as a peaceful constitution. Although it is somewhat contradictory to Yoneda's pre previous work, this work can be interpreted as a satire of democracy. I cannot know what ideology Yoneda held on the relationship between art and politics, because in 1954, she left the following mysterious statement in her journal, where she quotes Daisei Teitaro Suzuki, who used to serve in World War II. Let your ears send a message of surprise or perplexity. That's the way. Was asked, <laughs> Dr. Suzuki, what is the difference between men are men and mountains are mountains before studying them, and men are men and mountains are mountains after studying them? It is not a question of going into oneself or out to the world. It is rather a condition of fluency that's in and out. Yoneda got married for the second time in 19, uh, 1948 and lived the rest of her life as a housewife. Until the discovery of her manuscript, her life and works were completely unknown. Uh, let me introduce trial number 287 of 1154. <laughs> She died in Tokyo in 1992. As an interesting side note, her birth year and death year are the same as John Cage's. Let me introduce trial number 94 to 98 of 1154. is exiled and marginal, an amateur, and the author of a language that tries to speak the truth to power. Due to her gender and the political condition during the war period in Japan, Keiko Yoneda was forced to become exiled and marginalized. She was not a professional, but an amateur artist. 
I believe that non-professional, non-white artist Keiko Yoneda's life and works will allow us to question and deconstruct our Western-centric and patriarchal history, art, and culture. This photo of her mm -hmm. is uh, like sound artist uh, Chiho Oker, one of my, my team. She oh. just uh, synthesized her face, and uh, Japanese novelist, uh, maybe Ichio Higuchi or some, some of them. So, yeah. And uh, our team created her biography. Uh -huh. Yeah, so something like that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this uh, research project is yes. there. Yeah, so we did this kind of research. So, is everybody clear on that? <laughs> This is a fictional composer. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you show us the photo, it's kind of clear that it's fictional. For, for, for like, yeah, for some, for, for the people from East Asia, it's more, maybe like, like uh, this one, like, it cannot be her diary, for example. <laughs> it's, it's from like, uh, 12th century or something? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it's really ancient one. Yeah. So right. yeah, it's impossible that he her, her wrote she wrote this style yes. in this style. Or although yeah. composers can be crazy, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I wrote her manuscript mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, like uh, this is true. Yeah, yes, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, was, yeah, it's so true. And uh, and that and this Yeah, yeah. This is from John Cage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's uh, like a last statement, like our artist is exiled, mad now. This is from Edward Said. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be really interesting mix about like a, I really into Edward Said about especially about his uh, notion of Orientalism. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, and uh, yeah. So if that, was, that this, was my next question. I mean, this is this fictional composer is born the same day. As yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It seemed like there was an important, <laughs> important parallel that you well, were. Well, yeah, actually, we just made this constraint for the first time without thinking of anything. Just uh -huh. there, she was born and died in this age, like uh -huh. same as John Cage. Yeah, and we didn't think of it, so we just uh, had to figure out uh, like some kind of justification. Uh -huh. <laughs> why we? Why is it like same with John Cage? Yeah. So that was my answer. Can you talk about composing for a fictional character? Yeah, uh, my mentor here, Michael Pizarro, mm -hmm. told me about the Portuguese poet Fernand Fernand Pessoa. Uh, he had so many heteronyms, uh -huh. like uh, ma many auto names, and uh, every character was so different. Yeah. But for me, like I just uh, composed my my thing. Like a teenager trial is my my kind of fetish, like fetishes. <laughs> so uh -huh. so I love this stuff. And I tr started to collect this, like a kind of collection, 
I was uh, inspired by two authors, like one of one is Borges, yes, and another one is Kenneth Goldsmith. They are conceptual poets yeah. and the conceptual writing poets, and he did like come kind of simple appropriation creation from like New yes. York Times or something. So I thought like, okay, I will just do the collection of Sime to try it from Beethoven's piano sonata yeah. without thinking of anything, just collection, like uh, just to like appropriation or something. Mm. Then like. I, I, I read Bohes, and yeah, this was also like kind of mixed. Yeah, well, the, when I first, William Smith told me about it, but when he first yeah. mentioned it to me, I immediately thought of Bohes. Yeah, his, yeah it's uh, directly and, connected. Um, his story, Pierre Menard, author of Don Quixote, mm. uh, in particular. How many people have read that or his story, Pierre Menard? So it's a, it's a story by Borges in his book, Fictiones, uh, that is uh, a fictional account of an author um, and a kind of an obituary for this author who had died, who had done all these different things, both as a writer and a social figure. Yeah. And it's a kind of detailing of everything that this fictional author had done. Yeah, it was quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. But you, you, I mean, like this, you need, you need to, it needs to be grounded in like a social and political and cultural I, reality. Ex yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. The first thing is like I am a bit sad about like Japanese history. Mm. Not a bit, like <laughs> I'm so sad. But like I still have, yeah, or just mentioning about music history in Japan. Like there's there cannot be like such hero like like Hiko Yone. So yeah, like like most of them just contributed to the war, like Kosaki Yamada. Or mm. like yeah, so I just wanted to kind of hero or something, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. But it was quite uh, like, yeah, and I really hate current prime minister. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, uh, yeah, like many of her like previous uh, prime minister in Japan was like right wing, but like, and many of them like it tried to change the constitution. But uh, this current minister was like quite different. Like he said like, we don't have to change, but we can just uh, change the way how we read. Mm -hmm. So just change the interpretation and uh, it went successfully, so we can maybe send the army to other countries. Yeah, so this is a kind of thing like, so what can we read after this di disaster? So, mm -hmm. uh, or something like, uh, many people like, it's something common in the world, I think, and uh, like uh, to, to the str str strategy against this kind of thing, like uh, many people doing some like a realistic thing or social realistic activism or like uh, everything should be clear like uh, I don't know I just wanted to be something in between like uh, yeah take this image and try it it might be like antithesis to such propaganda mm -hmm. and it cannot be maybe <laughs> who knows so and uh, I just also wanted to keep something ambiguous like uh, indeterminacy or uh, diversity of this kind of interpretation yeah like uh, but yeah, uh, because of this kind of circumstances, we are, I think we are losing this kind of freedom to uh, listen to music uh, like freely. Or, right. Yeah, so that's why I also really love Pauline Oliveros. Like mm. she's so open <laughs> and uh, like no like a militarization of the rhetoric or something. Yeah, you know? that's how it's it's really, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, my way was a bit not like to militarize her either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my way of this presentation is more a bit like uh, militarized, but yeah, <laughs> but I just uh, I'm just looking for my way to yeah. To, uh, yeah. About you, this, yeah. And you had mentioned that you're working with a team. Yeah. So it's a collaborative project. Yeah. So the sound of poetry poetry thing is uh, like uh, written by the poet. She she wrote this poet uh, po poetry. Uh, yeah. So. Like uh, consists of this team consists of poets, uh, video artists, sound artists, uh -huh. like conductor, trombonist, wow. <laughs> tubist, and many, yeah, mm -hmm. or critic, writer, yeah. So mm -hmm. we're, yeah, doing this. So this is one project, and are there other? And uh, yeah, sorry, like it was easy to say this. <laughs> I have a team in Japan, but it was only for this project. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Now we are not actively. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A short-lived collective. As many of them are. Um, do other people have questions or comments? Okay. 
What was the reception in the music school? You did this for, you did this before, right? In the music school? Uh, no, this is the first. <laughs> first time at Cal Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> World West Coast premiere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Anything else? All right, well, thank you. Thank you.